straight down. But she was just an absolute menace. Like she runs around and hit things like I've never seen. One of the girls was dressed as a shepherd and actually fish hooked the bouncer <laughs> to try and stop him from picking us out. End of the Six Nations, so like the Grand Slam winning game against Italy, I was selected for due to start and then the week leading into it, basically came back with a positive COVID test. Hi, my name's Mo Hunt and these are my Jersey Tales. So, let's start where it all began. This is Drybrook Rugby Club, so born and raised um, down in Drybrook. Two sisters, but um, that both played with me at the time, which was amazing. And it was just a super special time, like from a rugby background, like my granddad used to play, my dad played at Drybrook as well. Shelley and Gordy Bourne were our coaches, who were just absolute legends, like still stay in touch now. I know they still follow the journey and Gordy's one of my granddad's friends as well. So like very much a family club. And running out of my sisters was always pretty special. Like we've been so competitive our whole lives. My, Elder sister used to play fullback. I sometimes played nine, sometimes played back at fullback as well if she wasn't playing. And then my little sister, she was just an absolute menace. Like she runs around and hit things like I've never seen. So it's a bit of a joke that she's probably a better rugby player than me, but just hasn't actually gone on and, and done what I've done. So yeah, like this was a good one to start. They've actually named the gym after us. I was out of the World Cup with Kerry Large, who was the 10. We grew up together, like she's one of my sister's best mates, a um, couple years below me at school, played at Drybrook. When we came back after winning the World Cup, they gave us a bit of a homecoming, which was so, so special, and named the gym after us. So it's the Natasha Hunt and Kerry Large Gymnasium, which is pretty awesome, like unbelievable that it actually happened. But yeah, just love the support from there, love the club. It's a real family place and a great place to go back to. So this is Litchfield. Amazing thing about Litchfield was probably the socials. Like it was just renowned for having the most amazing like nights out together. I remember one time being on a Christmas social and at the bar they actually shouted, stop serving anyone in fancy dress, which was our creep because one of the girls was dressed as a shepherd and actually fish hooked the bouncer <laughs> to try and stop him from kicking us out. So it was just wild, like really good times, really great bunch of girls. And we just played some brilliant rugby, like the calls of the moves that we had, like sisters and cousins, which meant like our offload lines on the insides or outsides. Um, it was just like that family feel and absolutely adored playing alongside the girls. Really enjoyed what we did and we were actually really quite good as well. So when we got taken out of the league because of the way that the system works and the whole structure around it and stuff, it was pretty gutting that that team got split up um, and given chance it would be awesome to go back and play with everyone again because I think we'd give any team a good run around if everyone was back fully fit and firing. I remember actually standing in my grandma's kitchen and saying, one day I want to play for England. Like, I don't know what sport, but just want to play for England. Which she, I think, laughed at me, but now like <laughs> she kind of sees where that's come from. Yeah, fortunate enough for me, that drive and determination has kind of paid off. So this is my mum's favourite shirt. I haven't let her frame it yet, but because of the colours on it, she just loves a bit of colour. Um, this was, I can't even remember, it must have been 2017, um, just before World Cup. Um, we went out to New Zealand, we had a series against Australia, South Africa and New Zealand and um, we played actually as a curtain raiser for the Maori All Blacks against um, the Lions game which was just unreal, like brilliant stadium, crowds were coming in, there was loads of people on the banks and the whole atmosphere was just amazing and we were lucky enough that we just played some really good rugby, like came away with the win which was huge for us because we hadn't gone out to New Zealand and won in a very long time so yeah, just again, really fond memories, like really special group of girls. This is my last shirt that I wore for England Rugby. This one was actually quite special as well because I missed out on the end of the Six Nations, so like the Grand Slam winning game against Italy. I was selected for due to start and then the week leading into it, basically came back with a positive COVID test. I had to sit on the sofa watching the girls go out and do the Grand Slam thing, which was amazing, like absolutely loved it. and. So then coming back, this was um, the autumns against France and my COVID return was a bit shaky. Like I did struggle a little bit with my lungs. I like just like couldn't really get air into them. And it was just, it was all a bit weird. I think athletes that have gone through it will understand, but definitely out the other side now. So feel fine talking about it. But yeah, like there were times when the game I like to play is quite fast and I like to be on top of it the whole time and keep a nice and high tempo. And, 
I remember being in this really savage, it wasn't even meant to be savage, but it was the session on a Wednesday before the game and I just literally felt like I couldn't breathe. So a little bit stressed about that, but um, we got it, we got there. We played France at Twickenham. We managed to win with the last kick of the game from Emily Scarrett's boot, the classic one. Um, and yeah, it was just awesome to be back out there with the girls, especially after obviously missing out on that for all of those things and, and struggling with different parts of coming back from the COVID return. Getting back out there and putting the shirt on was really special and especially doing it at Twickenham as well. This one's um, 2017 World Cup, which was out in Ireland. We were in a hotel, which we actually got put in the same hotel as New Zealand, which was a bit random because in the 15s game, you never really share a hotel with the opposition. Like obviously for me with my sevens background, it was like relatively normal because on the World Series, you're all in the same hotel. But a lot of the girls were a little bit thrown by the fact that we were in the same hotel as potentially the opposition that we were going to be in the final against and it did end up being that way. So final morning was a bit strange, like seeing them walking around the corridors and stuff like that. Like our team meeting room was literally next to theirs and yeah, logistically just all a bit weird, but um, super cool. Like the final as well, running out to the crowd, singing the anthem and obviously being in Ireland, we had a lot of home support and yeah, like gutted with the result, like beyond gutted with the result. Um, we had a real hold on the game and then just kind of let New Zealand in just before half time, like give them a little chink in our armour where they could just pick and go and almost bully us up front. Yeah, it was a tough one to take that one was, especially because I felt like I like made quite a big error to let them back into the game when we went back ahead. Like I kicked a ball straight out to take one step out of the 22, thought I was still in the 22, tried to clear the lines and they ended up scoring off the next play and then I got a fish hooked off the pitch straight away. So yeah, that one kind of stung a lot and feel quite responsible for the outcome in it, which I've managed to get over now, but it did take me a little while to actually come to terms with that. But again, like the night out was decent. Like we all ended up in the same hotel. We were in the same room as the Kiwis in the end. And it's a game at the end of the day. Like we, we beat them out in New Zealand. They beat us in the World Cup final and it is what it is. So yeah, we'll see. Maybe, maybe in a couple of years time. 2016 Rio, um, super like super special. I know I say super special about all of them, but honestly they are and just reminiscing like this is is pretty epic. Uh, never thought this would ever be an opportunity, like never thought I'd ever get the chance to be involved in Olympic Games. Obviously it wasn't in the Olympics for a very long time and to actually make the squad and everyone that plays rugby knows what it's like, that you're always battling injury or like selection, especially when you're cut from a squad of say 24 to 12, which is what it was. Um, just absolutely amazing to be there. Like I remember standing on the balcony. We didn't go to the opening ceremony because we played the next day. We were the first games out. And I remember just being stood on the balcony and watching just this sheer swarms of people and buses go to the opening ceremony and just realizing like a real like wake up call of how actually big this was, what we were involved in and gutting to come forth, like absolutely devastated, especially because we beat um, Canada so well in the first game in the, in the um, in the pool stages, but it is what it is, as they say, like, you can't take away the fact that um, I went to the Olympics, like, my family were in the crowd, like, they were out in Rio, loving it, like, both sisters, my mum and dad, um, and they had the best time as well, so that's almost as special as, as actually being out there. And last but not least, yeah, Tokyo 2020, like, unreal experience, I think the build up for me was probably even more special than being at the Olympic Games. I think being part of a Team GB programme that had so many Scottish and Welsh internationals in uh, was super special. Like we had it the, in 2016, but it wasn't quite the same feel. There wasn't as many people that were coming in and just the girls that were involved, just forever grateful because yeah, it's kind of almost written in the stars, I guess, that I managed to do it again. Do it again with Jazz Joyce and Abby Brown, who were the two from the previous time and fourth again, like anywhere but fourth, do you know what I mean? Like anywhere but fourth, but to give ourselves the shot of playing for a medal and the way that we played against USA, like we can be eternally proud of that. Again, like so grateful for the people that along my journey, whether it's been in netball, rugby, whether it's been like friends, family, coaches, physios, mentors, like other teammates that I've looked up to or have helped me along the way, like so thankful for everyone for being part of it. and. Yeah, just hoping that there's a little bit more to come from me yet. 
Thank you for watching. I'd love to know what you think about my stories. Let me know in the comments below. Are you serious? Okay, this is, you're gonna love this. Hi, I'm James Haskell, and these are my Jersey Tales. They basically started burning my garden furniture in the garden, and for me it was, um, oh, sorry. Shut the up. I love you. That's what happened, the camera panned, and I was like this. No, I didn't do that. And we should have won, but one of my teammates got his hands caught in the cookie jar and just wouldn't listen to any of us when we told him, let go of the ball, you idiot. So I discovered that I was in the team from the, the lady behind the counter. You know, I regard myself more of a saint than anything else because of the relationship I have and, and the fact they welcomed me back.